I'd like to welcome everyone today to the wedding of Victoria and John Joe. Um, years ago, me and Victoria both went to school at Raddy Pole and reception down across the road from St Anne's and uh, she's always said that she wanted to get married at St Anne's and have a party at the big manor house. So that's come together today, which is lovely. Victoria's a wonderful big sister. Um, she's always been there. I'm very proud of her and I don't say it enough, but I do love you. Oh. <laughs> Earlier, I heard someone say, who is this mustachioed brute? And why, why is he marrying Victoria? And these are the two questions I'm about to answer. So I've broken up John Joe's adult life uh, into a series of obvious phases. Um, unfortunately for John Joe, I've missed out any of them that make him look good or show him in a positive light. Um, so I'll start with phase one, uh, and I'm going to call this the Jason Bourne phase. <laughs> so some of, you might, some, some of you might think this is a reference to his martial arts prowess. Uh, it's not, uh, because that, that might make him look good. Um, so it's actually a reference to his time spent as a bouncer. Yesterday I found out that during this phase, he dismantled a toilet, <laughs> took the chain out and made a pair of nunchucks. <laughs> he was also capable of navigating around Weymouth without being spotted by CCTV, just like Jason Bourne. <laughs> Anyway, we never found out why the CIA were after John Joe, uh, but the paranoia gradually subsided uh, and it was replaced by an equally disturbing phase. Phase two, the strictly come dancing phase. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, at some stage, John Joe turned his back on the dark world of international espionage uh, and he became comfortable with his sexuality. Uh, <laughs> He went to Latin dancing lessons and he bought several pairs of very tight black jeans and very, very pointy black shoes. And suddenly he was transformed into Weymouth's answer to Bruce Forsyth. Phase three, the country gent. <laughs> So Jonathan, uh, as he insisted on being called during this phase, <laughs> he developed a passion for country pursuits and the finer things in life. Uh, he bought a shotgun. RSPB noticed a significant drop in bird numbers because he would literally shoot anything that had the bare-faced audacity to fly near him. Jonathan loved to sit outside and flick through a copy of Horse and Hound. Uh, he also enjoyed smoking a pipe, yes. Jonathan had become a pipe smoker. He assured me it wasn't crack, but his increasingly uh, erratic behaviour suggested otherwise. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We have come together to witness the marriage of John and Victoria, to pray for God's blessing on them, to share their joy and to celebrate their love. Victoria, I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I show you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I, Victoria Jane, take you, John Joseph, to be my husband, a have and to hold, from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death us do part, according to God's holy will. In the presence of God, I make this vow.
presence of God and before this congregation, John and Victoria have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of rings. I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. And this is the point where we congratulate them. <laughs> I'm a celebrity phase. <laughs> I almost don't want to talk about it because it was so painful at the time. Um, so anyway, the, the tragic death of my idol, Margaret Thatcher, God bless her soul, uh, it flung John Joe into the international media spotlight. So the call went out for a Royal Marine who had two medals, was John Joe's height and could walk in a straight line. <laughs> There was an exhaustive search and the powers that be managed to unearth John Joe. Number three on my list of four things to do. It says say nice things about Vic. Um, sure, that's not hard. I think everyone will agree that she looks absolutely incredible. Oh, yeah. Weekly Vic will come home with a story of how she's like retaught someone how to walk again. Um, spending your life with someone like that is uh, pretty incredible. So yeah, it's, it makes me incredibly proud to spend my life with her. One afternoon, uh, he was lying at home on his cold, hard, white bench. He spent the previous two hours finally combing his moustache. After all, it had made him the global icon that he'd now become. So he was struck by an idea, and it was a good idea. He could use his newfound status to raise money for injured soldiers. However, he'd need the approval of the chain of command, so he penned a letter to the Commandant General of the Royal Marines, which I <laughs> happen to have here. <laughs> Dear Ed, no need for rank, now I'm famous. By now you will no doubt be aware of my exceptional moustache and the role I played at Maggie's funeral. He, he went for like a casual approach to the letter. I seem to have built up quite the fan base. Granted, this is currently only amongst a small group of gay men with a moustache <laughs> fetish. But hey, let's not discriminate. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. I mean, who hasn't got a little bit too royal on a run ashore after a few too many wets? <laughs> know what I mean? They're probably hoofing blokes. If I can somehow manage to get money out of them, we can square away all the wounded guys. <laughs> Now, uh, some of you may have misinterpreted my words and twisted them and have developed a slightly less than favourable impression of John Joe. Uh, at the start of this speech, I said I'd answer two questions. Uh, who is he? And why should he marry Victoria? Uh, I think I've answered both, but just to set the record straight, I probably do need to point out that John Joe is an outrageously loyal and generous person, and despite what I've just talked about, he's annoyingly good at just about everything he does. Uh, I've never met a more selfless person who will literally and worryingly do anything for a mate. Uh, and these seem like pretty good ingredients for a husband to me. Not that I really know what good ingredients for a husband are. <laughs> and John Joe and Victoria have had a pretty horrendous couple of years, uh, but they've got through it together. This is clearly a very special couple. And I ask you to join me and raise a glass for Mr. and Mrs. Caulfield. Thank <laughs> you.